They call man false name. I can play anywhere and I shame. I got more than a lot on the line. To take on a man get twine. To take on a man get twine. I got more than a lot on the line. I can play anywhere and I shame. They call man false name. Eastbourne, a small coastal town situated in the southeast of England, once inhabited by the Normans during the 13th century, it is a place known for its pier, chalk cliffs, and obscene amount of elderly people. But amidst the suffocation of tourists and shoppers in the town centre hides a subculture not many are aware of. Introducing Peer Pressure, a left-wing ultras group for Eastbourne Town Football Club. Founded in 2015 as a means of supporting their local team after falling out of love with the disillusioned Premier League, the group has created a community at a club competing in the ninth tier of English football. The self-depreciating chants about Eastman stereotypes and the sound of a beating drum, there is a party atmosphere on match day. Oh, and chants like that too. It was once stated that football and politics shouldn't mix. And in some aspects, they're not wrong. But the sport, especially at a semi-professional level, is a good platform to gain publicity for good causes, something supporters groups are taking full advantage of. In peer pressure's instance, they display banners that promote LGBT equality, as well as a flag that welcomes refugees. The group also likes to contribute to the community through charitable work. A lot of stuff, we've done a lot of stuff for the food bank, we've done a lot of stuff for local homeless um, charities, especially during the winter. Um, we've collected even for Windsor Football Club when we played them in the FA Vars because the homeless were getting a lot of shit on them. In the media that week especially, yeah, yeah. the story came out. of how So we try to remain current with what we try and raise money for, but essentially we're trying to help a community, which is ours, but we will do it for Windsor, like we won't raise like over 500 quid for them. So, you know, it's, it's important, but it's not just money that we're trying to put in, it's time and effort. To discover more, I went down to Eastbourne Town's league encounter with Eastbourne United so I can speak to those involved. Before we proceed, there was a minor issue with the interview. Despite shooting it twice, once before the game and again at half time, the microphone failed to work, meaning that all audio came from me. It also got gate crashed the second time around. This is how it went. <laughs> You're looking at it, for fuck's sake. I'm all you need to be given that. Stay to them, mate. Uh, they got given a drum by the church. Don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me. The church. The church. The church of Balrog. The Catholic church. <laughs> no, you ain't nothing but a Balrog. <laughs> The game ended in a 5-3 thriller as Eastbourne Town secured a domestic double over their neighbours who are wallowing near the foot of the table. Despite the scoreline, their entertainment took place behind each goal as the fans were in fine voice throughout. Fast forward a week and I was at last able to secure the interview that had been eluding me for so long. What is peer pressure? Peer pressure is a fan group for Eastbourne Town Football Club, in essence. What's the group's origin story and what was the thinking behind the name peer pressure? Uh, the group's origins are a group of disillusioned fans that felt put off by the prices of uh, Premier League football, like West Ham and fucking whatever, um, and just the whole capitalist bourgeois regime that goes with that. So grassroots and community football is more what a group of logical, politically minded young people were thinking of going for. And what was the other bit? Uh, what's the name behind? What was the what, oh, the pier burning down. Yeah. Yeah. Which may or may not have been a no face, no name, or a balrog. It's, it's, a, play, it's a play on words. Yeah, it's a play on words. Because of the famous saying, the pressure. Yeah, yeah. How did people react to your antics? Uh, generally, they've been okay. There's been a Mixed couple bag. of raised eyebrows. It depends how fucking wild we get, you know? Uh, it just depends, basically. What attracted you to this club in particular? Location. It's Location. where we all are based, and it's the oldest. And the, the people who started it. We're all, we've all been friends and known each other on and off for years. It's, it's a group of like-minded like people of a certain age with low morals. 
the club's heritage and basically just what I feel about Eastbourne is there's a certain demographic of young people that are forced into making a subculture based on the presumption that there is an older generation peering down on us and any overbearing social situation there'll always be a subculture come out of it and in my opinion this is what has it's happened this here. This basically was the epitome of that older generation yeah. and how we just added a bit of life into it. Yeah. Do you use the ultra tag when it's synonymous for like hooliganism exclusiveness pretty much. Well, I think we're trying to change it more than anything. It's more of a tongue-in-cheek use of the ultras tag. It's not... It's a pastiche, it's a pastiche. baby. <laughs> it's a pastiche, pastiche it's a thing. Seaside it's a thing that maybe East Preston Ultras don't get they, because they are loyal to like a St George's flag or patriotism, but whereas we are trying to do things in a slightly different way, like anti-homophobia, anti-violence and stuff. Um, yeah, it gets misconstrued along the way, but clubs like Clapton, Dulwich and Whitehawk, who we've got a few here with us today, that's an important basis of their ultras fandom, you know? Yeah. It's almost taking the word ultras away from everything you just said, you know, like, yeah. you never heard it was, but it's not what it was. Uh, unique New York. No, um, it's the charitable stuff we do. Um, yeah, it, I, think I, just, the, like, I think the most unique thing about it is the where it is. It's like this, is, this should not be happening in a town like Eastbourne. Like yeah, a conservative, older generation town. This shouldn't be happening. Like I said, a but. strong subculture is formed off the back of the social implications of Eastbourne, and things are changing for better. Um, yeah, it's. It's it, I, I mean, we're, drums to make a bit of yeah, about it. yeah and the way it, the way it's grown the last two years is fucking incredible. Like, you know, when it started, you were lucky to get a group like that. But on a good day, we've had like between seventy and eighty of just us. Yeah, and that's been including crowds here. But three three years ago, the top attendance was about two fifty. This year, we're about seven eighty. I think it was. Yeah. So I mean, it's, it's money through the gates, money for the club. Well, what does the group hope to achieve in the future? I personally want to do more local homelessness based work just on the shocking figures that have come out about Eastbourne and just seeing it on the streets, I want to personally do that. Um, just keep on supporting the club, doing the best we can as fans, but also having a little bit of fucking... Just keep, just keep building, getting, yeah. getting good people, doing good things in yeah. the, in like for the local community. What I've learnt throughout the production of this is that football is more than the game on the pitch, it's what's being created off it. Alternating the stereotypes synonymous with the Ultras tag, peer pressure have created something where everyone can join in the festivities and be part of an ever-expanding community. In an era where discrimination at football grounds is still an issue, the group are providing a good role model for the next generation of football fans in this area. Represent your country, raise your flag, so your two colors.